Not so much. Well, congratulations to the girls and boys soccer team, the volleyball team, the cross country teams. They will get to join us next month as we recognize them officially. And a huge shout out for Stuco. You guys are at all of those events were happening right at almost the end of final, you know, the end of the first quarter. And so thank you to all of the leadership that that organized events to uh, support our students as they were wrapping up the first term. Right. Thanks thank much. Thank you. I'll see you next month. The next item on our agenda are recognitions, and so I'll join Dr. Anderson at the podium. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, it's my honor at our school board meetings to convene the recognitions program. My name is Chase Anderson. I'm the superintendent for the school district, and we have a number of uh, recognitions this evening for which we're very excited about. We have a large uh, contingent here tonight for a very special war award, and uh, that is for our national uh, merit uh, recipients. And we're just so uh, happy to have all of you here tonight. And want to congratulate you for uh, the great work that you've done. So we'll also do a couple of uh, employees of the month and uh, a special award for a world language teacher who I've seen here. Uh, in attendance as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, uh, move forward and share a little bit about our uh, National Merit semi, uh, Scholarship semifinalists and uh, the esteemed teachers program. So I know we have a number of our uh, teachers being recognized tonight. Uh, each of our uh, National Merit semifinalists have an opportunity to select a teacher uh, for whom they uh, show uh, recognition and appreciation for uh, the work that led them uh, to not only this honor, but all of their other great academic achievements. I would like to, uh, at this time, invite also Amy Swenson to come forward. She's going to be reading the names and sharing the names of the teachers uh, here momentarily. But I would like to uh, just share the following uh, before I turn it over to Amy. Wyzetta is proud to recognize 32 Wyzetta High School students who have been named semifinalists in the 2024 National Merit Scholarship Program. Congratulations to these students for being named among only 16,000 semifinalists from across the country. High school juniors entered the National Merit Scholarship Program by taking the 2022 Preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, which served as an initial screen of program entrance. The nationwide pool of semifinalists representing less than 1% of U.S. high school seniors includes the highest scoring entrance in each state. These academically talented high school seniors have an opportunity to continue in the competition for 7,500 National Merit Scholarships worth nearly 30 million that will be offered next spring. Amy Swenson, our Enrichment Coordinator at Wyzetta High School, will introduce each of the National Merit semifinalists and share the names of the teachers being recognized by these students. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Amy. Amy, thank you for being here tonight. So I just want to add my congratulations to all of these um, students. It is truly an honor to be able to work with them and to watch them as they um, kind of um, see the fruition of their, their hard work. So as I call your name, if you are here, please come forward. Um, and then I believe there's a picture afterwards. Okay, so we'll just kind of have you stand up in here. So first, Aparna Akuta Parambil. Lucia Aki. William Barrett. Come on up. Come on down. Alex Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Mingyanga. Dhruv Gupta, Evan Shah, Sansia Mary Gerald Wilson, Anuj Kakad, Rushal Kadilkar, Alexis Kim, Nora Lawrence, Willie Liu, Felicia Lua, Michaela Ma, Tanisha Mandel, Ishan Mehta, 
Rhea Menon. Nithin Mendu. Kale Myers. Nishad Naik. Tasha Pyang Bankarn. Siddharth Salapaka. Devang Sharma. Nitish Sharodkar. Nandini Sridhar. Viraj Taneja. Rachel Torniainen. Janavi Tungtur. Alina Varghese. Brittany Wang. Daryl Zhao. Let's give a round of applause for our National Merit Semi-Finalists. So now you know what it's like to feel like you're famous, right? Um, so it's a long-standing tradition at Wayzata High School that our National Merit Semifinalists identify a significant K-8 staff member as, long, as well as a significant 9-12 staff member um, that have played an important role in their learning. This year's semifinalists selected the following individuals as their esteemed staff nominees. Each staff member identified um, will be presented with a lapel pin um, in recognition of, of this nomination. Um, as part of the nomination, students wrote about why they nominated that individual, and all of the staff members were then shared that information um, in a letter. So our K-8 esteemed staff, Ruth Vassant, Christian Bergeron, Ward Bloomer, Lisa Brewer, Ashley Chavez, Tammy Corder, Clarice Jornby, Julie Kirchner, Mandy Krause, Polly Laugen, Kyle Moody, Erica Nickstead, and Barbara Warden. Our 912 esteemed staff include Karn Foss, Peter Fuller, Mark Gitch, Jody Grock, Elizabeth Hansen, Michelle Jacklich, Shannon Kelly, Paul Kimler, Catherine Kotke, Dr. Donald Krupsack, Tika Kudi, Jennifer Landy, 
Cindy McGonigal, Alyssa McIntyre, Brad Olson, Jeff Pranzinski, and Tyler Trimberger. Wyzetta is filled with amazing staff as evidenced by a summary of the words and thoughts of our National Merit semifinalists who had these things to say about why this group of staff members was important to them. She encouraged me to succeed in class and life in general. Thank you for making science class cool. She made sure that we felt cared for and supported throughout middle school. Her room was the one place at school that we considered a home and she was our home base. I would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for her. He made learning fun and taught me about life lessons that go beyond school. I learned how to have more integrity, to be more honest, and I came to understand the value of hard work and perseverance in his classroom. I am grateful for all the times that he pushed me out of my comfort zone and allowed me to go beyond what I thought I could accomplish. Every day, she would come to class eager to teach us, and her passion for science was severely contagious. She inspired me to delve into the world of STEM and learn how science and math, even in their purest forms, were being used to solve problems in engineering, medicine, robotics, and more. In addition to being an amazing teacher, she created a strong sense of belonging amongst her students. I also want to thank her for embodying the qualities of kindness and dedication and for always being there for us. And finally, she works hard to make sure that we are on a path for learning, resiliency, and personal growth. She always encourages us to give our very best. She doesn't make things easy for us, and I welcome the challenges she puts in front of us and her guidance in supporting us through it all. Congratulations to this year's National Merit Semifinalists and esteemed staff members. You make a difference and your efforts are deeply appreciated. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you so much everybody for being here and congratulations to all those teachers who were recognized. And I think while we were standing up here, we broke the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest smile during all those photographs. So you made history. Our next recognition this evening is for the 2023 Teacher of the Year Award from the Minnesota Council on the Teaching of Languages and Cultures. And I would like to invite Sheen Hang to please come forward to join us near the podium. I'll make a few comments about uh, the award that uh, Sheen has been uh, recognized for and then give her an opportunity to share a few comments if you would like to um, when, after I've finished. Uh, congratulations to Sheen Hang, a world language teacher at Wyzetta High School, for being named the 2023 Teacher of the Year by the Minnesota Council on the Teaching of Languages and Cultures. Sheen is known as a wonderful educator, mentor, club leader, and a cultural ambassador for her Wyzetta High School students. She will be recognized at the MCTLC Fall Conference on October 28th. You were recognized, I should say, and there's the award right there. So, Sheen, congratulations, and uh, you may make a few comments. Okay, uh, dear Madam Chair, members of the school board, Superintendent Dr. Anderson, I got this in order. <laughs> um, I stand before you tonight with a profound gratitude for the privilege of being recognized during this school board meeting. I want to take a moment to express my deep appreciation um, for you hard work, each of you hard work um, to, um, to the advancement of the schools. And tonight it's not um, about receiving that honor, it's 
an opportunity for me to extend my thanks for the collective efforts that have made this recognition possible. I share this achievement with my colleagues, my wonderful administrators, and supporting staff whose co collaboration has been instrumental in my journey. I am excited and motivated to continue contributing to the growth and success of high school. Thank you. Congratulations. The next recognition for this evening is for uh, our employees of the month, and we have two of those, and I would like to ask, uh, I think I'll have both of them step forward. I know they're both here, and that would be Dave Drogemuller and also Stephanie Ebert, if you would please join me up by the podium. And I'll read a little script uh, first for Dave and then for Stephanie, and then they will uh, each have an opportunity to make a few comments if uh, you would choose to do so. So welcome, thanks for being here tonight, and congratulations. I'll share the following, uh, first on behalf of Dave Drogemiller. Dave Drogemiller is in his 28th year as a mathematics teacher at Wyzetta High School. Dave is a passionate educator who has a knack for teaching intermediate algebra. Dave's dedication to helping our students transition to high school successfully through academics and character education is valued. He, would, he could teach any math class he desires, but continues to choose to work with freshmen. Dave is also a wrestling coach and was inducted to the Minnesota High School Coaches Association Wrestling Hall of Fame. He was a University of Nebraska Big 8 conference finalist and was inducted into the Osseo High School Wrestling Hall of Fame. Dave enjoys fishing and spending time with his family. Dave is truly a gift to the Wyzetta High School community and we're very fortunate to have him on our team. And I can say as a dad of two Wyzetta High School alums, uh, both of my kids had Mr. Drogemuller, and we still talk about uh, Mr. Drogemuller stories at our uh, dinner table and, and have a good laugh periodically. So Dave, congratulations, and uh, you can have a chance to say a few words if you'd like. Well, this is an awesome honor. I work with some great people, uh, great leadership, great kids. Um, this is a profession where we get to give back, and you know, I've had great mentors in my life, and I'm going to continue doing this if I can keep giving back a little bit longer, but uh, appreciate the honor, and thank you very much. And next this evening, uh, Stephanie Ebert is in her 11th year as a family and consumer science teacher at Wyzetta High School. Stephanie taught at East Middle School in 2012 and then transitioned to Wyzetta High School. She also serves as our Wyzetta Public Schools Career and Technical Education and Business Partnerships Coordinator. Stephanie teaches Introduction to Education and has helped our education-related courses grow in popularity by providing relevant and authentic learning experiences for our students. She helped implement a future educator signing ceremony which celebrates seniors who are embarking on their post-secondary journey to enter the world of education-related careers. And she also coordinates the mentor program within our Compass Professional Studies Experiential Learning Program. Stephanie is a Wyzetta High School graduate, and in 2005, she was chosen the recipient for the Family and Consumer Science Senior Award. We are grateful for Stephanie's contributions to our community, Congratulations to you, and I will also say she was my daughter's teacher. She took the education class with her in high school, and now she's a kindergarten teacher here in the Metro. So I think that had something to, to do with her career choice. So thank you for promoting our own profession and for all that you do to encourage our students to be uh, focusing on education. With that, I'll turn it over to you. Congratulations. Um, good evening. I guess I just want to say thank you for the award and the honor. I've been in 
why is that a, since I was five. Um, and so it's really an honor to be here um, many, many years later. And um, it's awesome to work with great administration and, and school that really um, encourages you to be creative and try new things um, for the students. So thank you. Oh, yes. I just saw him. So congratulations to our high school teachers. And um, I, we have one more uh, of recognition that we would like to share with you this evening. And it's a little bit of a surprise award. It wasn't in our board packet. Um, but it is absolutely an honor and a privilege to be presenting this. So um, it is my honor and privilege, school board colleagues and Dr. Anderson and community members, to announce that Cheryl Polzine has been selected as an MSBA All-State School Board member. Whereas the formal ceremony and recognition will happen at the leadership conference in January, we wanted to take a moment this evening to recognize Cheryl and to share some of the inputs that, con that contributed to her most deserved selection. For some context about the honor, MSBA's All-State Board is, elected, is selected based on their example as lifelong learners, um, advocating for students at a local and state level, conducting business in an ethical way, keeping the vision and goals of the district in mind, and continually putting the needs of all students first. There are nearly 2,400 school board members in Minnesota. Board members are nominated by superintendents, fellow board members, parents, or community members for their outstanding contributions to public education. Cheryl was one of six board members chosen for the award this year. According to our MSBA Executive Director, Kirk Schneiderwin, the Allstate School Board represents the highest example of board service. These are school board members who are committed to student achievement, determined to build support for their local schools, and unwavering in their pursuit of what's best for students. So now I'd like to share just a few comments um, of the inputs that were shared in Cheryl's nominating letters. First, it would be difficult for me to find a more, a more than rare other one or two board members who would be as worthy as this honor as Cheryl. She is a great advocate for public education and meets the criteria in an exemplary fashion. Cheryl is a hardworking, informed advocate for public education and during legislative sessions, extremely knowledgeable and willing, in fact, even eager to go to the legislature and speak to legislators. She is also extremely cooperative and collaborative. Perhaps it's the extreme thoughtfulness in so many ways, both in interpersonal relationships, in examining board issues, and in always looking at what is best for kids that makes me unequivocally nominate Cheryl Polzine for an all-state board member. It would be difficult to find someone more deserving. Next, Cheryl, you are a dedicated thought leader. Your years of service are a true testimony to your, of your dedication to our district, and you are truly valued for your contributions. I see and appreciate everything you do. I have truly enjoyed working with you. It has been a privilege. Another board member said, I've really appreciated her guidance as I learned the ropes of being a board member. Cheryl has helped govern our district through so many challenges, and our district is better for it. I will miss her thoughtfulness and insight, Thank you for your service, Cheryl. Next, working with Cheryl has been an absolute privilege. Cheryl is the epitome of grassroots community-based involvement. Cheryl is a true team player, always putting the greater good at the center of her perspectives and decision making. She's been an incredible colleague, and as a new board member, I told her I was going to lean in and learn as much as I could from her. She met me, leaned in, and invested to building me into a strong board colleague. I'm so grateful to Cheryl. This is just who she is. She believes in the value of the team. She believes in the power of partnership. Thank you, Cheryl, for your dedicating, dedication to strengthening our board and our district. In closing, the application asks, how has Cheryl impacted the local board, school district, and student achievement in her 12 years on the board? And our answer is, 
in everything she does. Cheryl is a conscientious, committed, thoughtful, pragmatic, intuitive, and focused advocate for each and every student. She is a respectful and supportive board colleague. She is a detail-oriented, focused questioner that pushes our district to be our best selves. And she is a tireless cheerleader, often wearing blue and gold um, to every place she goes, um, who cares deeply for our teachers, for our administrators, for our families, and most of all for our students. It is with great admiration and gratitude that I enthusiastically share this distinct honor. Cheryl is a most deserving of the Allstate recognition and it has been a true honor and privilege to work and learn from her. So congratulations, Cheryl. Would you like to say something from the podium or your seat? Here. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I'm pretty much speechless because I did not expect anything like this. And um, it's sort of cliche to say it's been an honor and a privilege to serve in a position like this, but I truly feel that way. And the kind words everybody wrote. I only hope I can live up to them <clears throat> in the future things that I'll do in my life. And uh, I, I do know that this team, the, the players change, but we always work together. And, and that's what's so important to me. And I hope that it will continue to be that way. I've, I've seen many boards with my service on MSBA, and you'll see this now that you're in that seat. Um, boards don't always work like we do. And the district is much better for it. And the students get a much better experience when the administration and the board and the teachers and the community all work together. And that's how I said has always been since I've been in this seat. And I'm very, very proud of that. And um, I guess I won't say any more because <clears throat> I'm just speechless. Thank you. Congratulations. Sure. Can we do a photo? We don't get a lot of surprises, so that's fun to do. The next item on our agenda is our student spotlight presentation. And this is always a, a highlight of our meetings as we get to learn more about and recognize the work of the work that's happening in one of our buildings. And so uh, Dana Miller is here to introduce our team from the high school who will be telling us this evening about a portrait of a graduate. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, Superintendent Anderson, members of the board. Again, it's always the favorite time of every board meeting when we get to recognize um, our schools for their fantastic work, and tonight is no different, even though that's a hard act to follow, so congratulations, Cheryl. Um, tonight's um, high school will be here to present their portrait of a graduate, which launched this fall and is designed to offer students a wider perspective on what they're learning. So for example, many of your children have probably come home and you've asked them, what did you do today or what did, they learn, what did you learn? And they might say something like English or math. But if you were to ask our English or math teacher, they may say something quite more specific, like critical thinking or problem solving. The portrait of a graduate allows educators to set clear goals for how students progress and how that progression will be measured and the artifacts students can develop to demonstrate their learning. Lizetta's portrait is built around ICANN statements and sever future ready skills that stipulate a Lizetta graduate. Tonight it's my privilege to have 
Principal Scott Gingler and Associate Principal Tyler Shepard here tonight to speak with you about the portrait of the Wyzetta graduate and their hard work on behalf of that. Thank you. We're just waiting for it to pop up on the screen. There. Madam Chair, Superintendent Anderson, members of the board, thank you for uh, allowing us the opportunity to share this uh, very important work with you and, and really the direction that we've uh, moved the high school uh, in trying to recreate the student experience um, for all of our students at Wyzetta High School. Uh, before we get into the work of the portrait, I thought it would be uh, somewhat important uh, to knock off the rust a little bit around how we landed on a portrait of a Wyzetta graduate and how we use these six essential questions to essentially guide our work as a building instructional leadership team at Wyzetta High School. I shared this information uh, I think it was a year ago uh, with the board. And so I'd like to just take a moment just to review uh, how we answer these questions as an instructional leadership team uh, at Wyzetta High School and, and how the portrait came to be as a result of using this, these six questions to guide uh, that work. So first, why do we exist? Each and every student will graduate Wyzetta High School prepared for post-secondary success regardless of race, class, gender, or ability. Another way of saying this is at Wyzetta High School, student achievement will not be predictable by any demographic classification or other factors that students cannot control. This is worded real similar to how we worded this in the strategic direction for the school board and the school district uh, for the last number of years. How do we behave with a bone deep conviction that our personal and professional practices influence student results? So we behave with efficacy. And in other words, as a staff, we take ownership of the work uh, at Wyzetta High School, and we take ownership of the, the, the results that that work produces. So we don't, we don't blame Harold, or we don't blame the student, if uh, the student is underperforming or not performing at the level we know Harold is capable of performing at. We take responsibility. So if Harold is not performing because Harold is not turning in his homework, then we have to do it differently to help Harold understand the value of homework so that Harold performs at a higher level. If there are other factors that are uncontrollable that Harold uh, is struggling in school. We got to own that as a staff, as a community to provide the supports to help Harold become successful. So how do we behave as a staff? We behave with efficacy and we take responsibility for uh, our results. Uh, in 2016 uh, through 2023, we answered this question, what do we need to do? We need to move the middle. Uh, and we've made some adjustments. Uh, as you know, we put a lot of resources at the top, and we put in, uh, a lot of resources at our bottom 20%, and it was really random acts of readiness uh, for the largest percentage of students in the academic middle. So we put a, 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 a pretty purposeful focus on the work that we're doing for the academic middle. Um, but uh, coming out and progressing this work, um, we've shifted what do we need to do. We need to provide the right experiences for all students and thus the uh, creation of a portrait of a Wyzetta graduate. So we're going to talk a little bit about this in greater detail uh, in just a minute. Uh, as you know, uh, it's important work because students have very different pathways uh, when they leave Wyzetta High School. Some are moving to college, trade school, military employment, uh, technical, some are taking gap years. But regardless of their pathway, we know it's important that students uh, possess the skills for them to be successful in any of those pathways. And those skills are common, uh, regardless of which pathway you may choose. We will succeed through high quality instruction, professional development, and a great deal of professional collaboration among our staff. Um, you can see what we align to as professional learning uh, communities or teacher job alikes uh, throughout the district. Um, and when we're aligned in that work, uh, when we're focused on that work, we know that uh, all students will be able to uh, benefit. And again, um, alignment around that work was of most importance uh, in the earlier years through 2021. Um, 
and to just understand this graphic a little bit uh, in a little bit greater detail, those big arrows really represent why is that a high school. And all the little arrows in the big arrow represent the, all the programming and processes and systems that represent why is that a high school. So it could be a sports team, it could be a PLC, it could be student council, it could be a national merit group, it, whatever processes that we have and whatever programs we have that really make up the, the, the work at Wise Out of High School we want those arrows all aligning to each and every student will graduate prepared for post-secondary success regardless of race, class, gender, or ability. So we want to provide the very best practice in every one of our classes. So there's a lot of work that had to be done to align uh, all of uh, our, 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 our staff around uh, the work that we knew was going to be and we know will be uh, the most impactful in helping all students find success. So here's an example of some of that work that, that we were focused on aligning during those years. PLC expectations, norms, and accountability. Uh, we've moved to a collaborative inquiry model at the high school for PLCs. Uh, it moved from your, your, your traditional standard um, uh, and, of course, assessment goals to creating problems of practice that you know if we solve, high, more kids are going to have higher levels of achievement. Uh, aligning what a course syllabus looks like from class to class to class or making sure that at least within the same PLC we're not creating a very different experience uh, for students. Uh, Canvas, uh, as you all know, uh, became uh, a really vital part of our work as we navigated COVID and the importance of being able to maintain high expectations and common experiences when students were learning from home. That work has evolved and continues today. Uh, making sure that we're teaching the same standards uh, when we're in the same job alike courses uh, and that we have the same high level of expectations around those standards from course to course. Common assessments uh, among our PLCs, again, having common grading principles, so it's not a very different experience for a student when I walk into one class and then go to my next block and have a very different uh, grading experience. So again, a lot of time and a lot of effort was really aligned around this because our most important work was being able to obviously align uh, that work. When we came out of COVID, uh, we've shifted our, our, our purpose to making sure um, now that we are mostly aligned that, that uh, student experience will be uh, the most important work that we're engaged in uh, as a staff. And more importantly, uh, it should not be predictable based on race, class, gender, or ability. Student experience matters, and that became the focus of our work and really how we landed on how the portrait of boys that I graduated. As you know, when we talk about student experience, we're created with very different equity challenges. And it's important to understand that we can't just depend on hard work and caring to yield the results that we're looking for. Uh, we have to um, work hard, care unconditionally, and do it differently when we need to do it differently to help all students uh, find success. And we can't just value equity and hope to close an achievement gap. We have to be willing to recognize what the specific needs are for each student so that we can meet that student where they are and give them opportunities to grow and find success at Wyzetta High School through positive, healthy, meaningful experiences. Uh, who must do what? We must find value in each of the students we serve. We must find value in each other as PLC members. Uh, we should need to find value in our organization. Uh, we should be proud of what we've accomplished and be prepared to accomplish even more. So those are how, we, or that is how we uh, address our six essential questions. Uh, I'd like to focus a little bit more on what's most important in that student experience. So if the student experience matters, and how do we ensure a high quality personalized daily experience for every student, regardless of race, class, gender, or ability? And we're gonna do that through our promise. Our promise is again, our organizational why or why we exist. All students will graduate prepared for post-secondary success regardless of race, class, gender, or ability. The portrait of Wyzetta High School graduate uh, really defines what it means to be prepared. So we focused on that word uh, in our organizational why. So we created seven traits that contribute to the success uh, of a Wyzetta High School graduate. Uh, the seven traits we'll go into in great detail in uh, just a minute. Uh, Prior to reading the traits, is I think it's important to recognize that don't have to be perfectly written. Uh, there are many iterations that we went through to land where we did. Uh, what's most important is that it's clear to the students. So there are a number of ways that we can articulate each of those traits and the skills we're trying to represent in those traits. But we uh, uh, 
landed on was making sure it was it was easy for the students to understand what it was that we were uh, trying to uh, help accomplish. Uh, there are I can statements that are associated with each of the traits, and the I can statements are really for the students and student friendly language to say I can. And if I can meet this, if I can meet the, the criteria that uh, we've established, then that student has a, a a really good idea where they're landing in their growth for the particular uh, trait. Trait number one, believes in your ability to be successful. Why is that a high school graduate confidently and effectively takes responsibility for their work, their results, and their decisions? And I'll let you read through the other 10 statements. Why is that a high school graduate actively listens, asks thoughtful questions, and generates ideas that are clear, concise, and meaningful? I can. It was that a high school graduate respects the perspectives and experiences of others, even if different from their own. Values, diversity, and inclusion. I can. It was that a high school graduate curiously challenges their own thinking, reasoning, and beliefs to identify solutions to real-world problems, thinks critically and creatively. It was a high school graduate knows how to help, encourage, and inspire others towards a common goal or purpose through shared leadership and healthy competition. It was that a high school graduate quickly and effectively adapts to new situations, acquires new skills and knowledge, and applies them to solve problems or to take on new challenges, demonstrates learning agility and resilience. And finally, a Wayzata High School graduate understands their career, strengths, skills, and interests, and knows how to improve their physical, emotional, and social well-being. These are the traits that we landed on. Uh, we think are of most importance for a student when they graduate and leave. Why is that a high school? Uh, I get often asked, what's next? Um, uh, Associate Principal Shepard is here to talk about some of the work that's evolved already uh, within our building, within different PLCs and departments, uh, as we have uh, embedded this work uh, in, uh, in our classroom experiences for students, uh, but essentially all departments and courses will connect to the seven traits that will prepare our students for post-secondary success. Uh, I often get asked, how will you know? Well, we'll know if students are able to articulate, document, and or artifact how their experience at Wyzetta High School has influenced their growth within each trait. So from a staff perspective, it's the experiences we provide as adults for our students when a student can articulate 
how they've grown in a trait based on the experience that is being influenced by the adults in the building, then we've known we've done our work as it correlates to helping students develop into a portrait of a wise out of high school graduate. All right, so for what felt like a pretty heavy lift during workshop week as we revealed the portrait of a wise out of graduate and recognizing that we're only in really our second or just over our second month of, I guess, implementation, um, I would say that it's been wildly successful in terms of creating a common language in our building um, and encouraging teachers to weave it all throughout their classes and their curriculum. Just to give you a few examples of how that's already happening, um, in our career and tech ed uh, department, we have a work experience program. Uh, students are expected to put in at least 70 hours of work each term to earn a credit, and part of that is to do reflective journals. Those journals uh, used to feel like busy work to students. We have now tied each of those journals to one of the portraits of a wise out of grad, and it has really helped students find value in, during those re in doing those reflections on a weekly basis. Um, in math, we focus a lot of our curriculum on teamwork and team roles within each class and within each uh, subject area. Or, or within each chapter, um, and the portrait has really helped to align with the embrace collaboration um, section. Um, in our English departments, it's really helping our uh, teachers find purpose or understand the why of each task as it relates to when students are processing um, information as they're reading text, as they're articulating what they read in terms of their reflections. Um, our Honors Mentor Connection, which is led by Amy Swenson and uh, Amanda Layden. Uh, students work with their professional mentors. Uh, they face adversity. Uh, they learn how to navigate that through their experiences and new situations. Uh, our student council members um, are learning to lead with humility, to work and create an inclusive envir environment within our building and encourage others to do the same. Um, our special education evaluation teams have aligned their evaluations for students with the portrait of Wise at a grad to help parents and students uh, better understand the results of a special education evaluation um, that does occur every three years. Um, our achievement specialists are doing this to really empower students to lead groups to create a or an, to create an influence on our culture at the high school. Um, and last but not least, our, our art department in the graphic design class is uh, using the statement values, diversity, and inclusion in the graphic design classes to work with actual clients to develop posters. Uh, the entire lesson was redesigned with more thought and purpose uh, related to that. And lastly, uh, in front of you, well, in front of you and us is two posters. Um, Steph Ebert in our intro to education class really asked students to think critically and problem solve through real life uh, scenarios that they might experience in the world of education. Uh, so you can see two samples there um, of how that applied and how that related to the portrait of Wise at a grad. Um, another success tool that we use to really uh, share this information with our staff, with our students, and with our community is through posters. Uh, you have posters in front of you and we hope that you will display those somewhere with pride like we do. Um, to really, again, help share that common language that we're now utilizing. Uh, you'll see flags in our parking lot and all through our school, throughout our school. Um, and lastly, uh, t-shirts. Um, all our staff members wear t-shirts, and now you get to wear one with us. So that is Portrait of a Wise at a Grad. And I'll just close and reiterate a comment I made earlier. If, if in the end our students aren't able to articulate or document or artifact how they've grown in these traits, then this has been nothing more than a poster that we put on a wall. But as you can see from some of the examples in the first couple months, our staff has, have really embraced uh, this work. And, and uh, I can uh, share that I have a, my own child at the high school who's coming home telling me, what is this portrait of a graduate that I constantly am hearing about at the school and, and constantly having embedded in their coursework? Um, it's, it's been really impactful. I don't met one person, student, staff, parent, that hasn't thought this is probably the most important work we've come up with uh, as a high school. And uh, I'll just close also with, um, we've, we use this commonly uh, when we're helping students understand why we're doing some of the things that we're doing. So if we want to, um, add a student management scenario where I might have a student in my, 
my office, sometimes it's helpful for me to pull out the poster and ask the student, just read these traits under um, believes in your ability to be successful. And then where are you at in your own personal growth around that? And it's amazing the self-discovery that happens uh, with those conversations and students really understanding why we're making some of the decisions we're making or why um, um, we've, we've created the, the, the experience that we have for our students so they grow and continue to grow uh, in these particular traits. And with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Shepard and Mr. Gangler for this incredible presentation. I'm going to do a quick service announcement. I'm sorry, for just a minute. Um, the next item on our agenda is the audience opportunity to address the board. And I forgot to say in my opening comments, if you are here to address the board, there are forms that you can fill out back in the foyer. So that is coming up. Sorry for that. I should have said it before. Wanted to make sure everyone got that announcement. So now back to the work of the board. Questions or comments? Millant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, both of you, for this excellent presentation. And I think this is a great beginning, I hope. Um, both my children went to Vizetta High School, and they graduated much, much before Principal Gengler got on board. I don't think they had any of this. So assuming you know what was done in the past, is there one major difference that you can point out between this and what, what happened in the past? Well, just one or two. What? It's a great question, and I think this work has always been happening. Um, I don't think we've created a, a new vision, uh, but I don't think uh, our students always made the connection behind what it is we were attempting to help students or what skills we were uh, focused on helping students learn and grow in. And the example I think that uh, Dana gave in the intro, when when you know when my student would come home, I'd say, "Well, how was your day? Fine, you know." What did you work on today? Well, chemistry. You know, but if I asked the chemistry teacher what it is that he was working on with students, it will be a very different answer. And we want students to be able to understand uh, where they're, they're, they're experiencing their, their growth in these traits, uh, which experiences are leading to which traits, that they can continue to articulate that this is, a, this is whether I'm in a, a, a job application or a job interview or a college application or a college interview, these, this is very relevant uh, for that student and, and whether they're a, a, you know, 18 years old or applying for a, a third career at 50 years old. These are the skills and the traits that are applicable um, from uh, a pipe fitter all the way to a CEO of a, of a company. And, and that's what we want our students to fully understand. Whatever your pathway, these traits are going to help you be successful in that pathway. And I think that we've always been teaching it. We just haven't really made that connection for our, our students. Mm -hmm. Linda. <laughs> Thank you both so much for your presentation and the hard work that goes behind it. Um, uh, people often ask me about was it a high school because it is the largest high school in the state and some people know that and how do you manage that and so on. And to me, what you're doing about the portrait of a Wyzetta graduate really speaks to individualizing the work for each student. And so I commend you for it and I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Benita. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say ditto to that. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. I, you, I think you said earlier about empowering the student, and I, I think that is absolutely wonderful. And the posters and those types of things are just a reminder to see that every day. Uh, I just had a question. So um, when we think about each and every student, and if and all of our students are at different spaces, different places in their journey, and they may not quite be there, um, do we, do you have or intentional about um, uh, advocacy of mentoring for the student that may not quite be there, that you can ask the question, they still may say, well, I don't know, and, or they may be even shy about seeking to understand even different. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that and what's the plan or strategy for that? Director Lucky, good question. Um, a lot of that work will rest with our student support teams that, uh, as you know, is, is, is designed purposely to create a really tight net of support for our students and families. 
um, and to recognize where we need to be more purposeful with students. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, there's the expectation that all the adults in the building that are providing opportunities to build connections and relationships with students and, and providing those experiences are in that role of an academic mentor or a mentor in these traits. Um, it's also important to understand that this isn't a lesson plan we teach and assess and then check the box and say, well, you know, Harold's got it, right? And there are periods of Harold's experience at the high school where Harold might be feeling really confident in a particular trait and then at other times during his four-year experience, he might be feeling a little low on some of those traits. And that's okay. That's 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 part of the experience. That's part of understanding how we learn and grow, and uh, valuing what it is that essentially we're trying to 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 be as as people. Yeah. And I think if if we can just keep that at the focus, and and make sure that we just never it's never just a poster, and it's and it's really not a lesson plan that we teach and assess either. It's a way of being, mm. uh, and it's the experiences that we're providing that will help students grow. Uh, and, and it's okay to not be, you know, at the highest, I, I can just be, I, I, I probably shouldn't just use my own children as examples, but it's really easy uh, <laughs> to, to, to know, you know, there are times where it's easy to take responsibility, for example. Mm -hmm. And there are other times where it's a lot harder, but being able to do so in those tough situations is a sign of growth. Right, and so it's 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 not that we're we're there and then we can check the box and move on. And I think if if students understand that and the adults understand that, then it becomes more of of the culture and not necessarily a checkbox item. I absolutely love that. So meeting them where they are in their journey. So thank you. I appreciate that. Hey. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I think it's really interesting um, work that you're doing, and I think it's it leads to a, a more inclusive and more um, welcoming environment. And I'm wondering, you, you spoke a lot about the portrait of a graduate, but I think it can also have impact on the staff. And so I'm wondering if you can speak to, is there, are there changes that you're seeing in the staff to create a more inclusive environment? And what does that look like? Uh, I'll start if you want to add, but I think that work is, is um, this has evolved from that specific work that you're articulating on. Uh, I think we've been doing a lot of work as a staff using those six essential questions to try to create a more inclusive experience, try to create that more inclusive environment for not just our students, but our staff experience uh, as well. Aligning some of our work uh, has been very purposeful and aligned to you know, equity. And, and so I think uh, it's a both and. I don't think this is a way to do that. I think the portrait has evolved from the work of trying to create a more inclusive environment. Uh, and um, how are staff have embedded this into what we call a collaborative inquiry cycle uh, is, is, is in, and so it's probably a different workshop in and of itself. Um, but all of our PLCs are responsible for identifying uh, a, a, an inquiry or a problem of practice that if they could, if they could do it differently, it, it, so think of it as an inquiry. If we were to do our work differently, so we put the responsibility on us as the teachers and not the responsibility on the students. But if we as teachers, as a job alike of English 10 teachers, for example, or a job alike of biology teachers, if we do this differently, it should then yield a different result. So we create this problem of practice. That problem of practice is now aligned to identifying how we're gonna create a better opportunity for students to learn uh, or grow in these particular traits. So it's directly embedded. So as one of the examples that was given earlier by Associate Principal Shepard, um, they're using values, uh, diversity, and inclusion is embedded in their problem of practice and the work that they're uh, creating within their PLC or their job alike. Just to add to that, we're theming our professional development each month uh, related to each trait with teachers. 
um, so that we can showcase the work that is being done. We also celebrate um, seven to eight staff members per month um, and working into aligning those with the, these traits as well to celebrate that within each staff member, just as a way to keep that theme moving. And again, we're only two months in, it's kind of a work in progress, but making sure that our instructional leadership team prioritizes making sure that each of these traits is embedded throughout those staff meetings and, and our PD opportunities. Well, I have one question and a comment. Um, I wanna go back to the special education mm -hmm. and the way that it's embedded and you talked about embedding, embedding it into the assessments. Is it also then a conversation in the annual IEP process and, and the way that the student is achieving as well? Yep, absolutely, and it fits really well into like our social emotional learning classrooms, our essential skills classrooms, many, many aspects of special services in that programming. Okay, thank you. And, and written into goals for individual student education plans as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And my comment, um, I we shouldn't talk about our kids, but they teach us the most, right? And so there's one circle on the portrait of a graduate that I've been talking about with my child for a long time, and that was, Mom, you don't know anything, and that's actually not how it works in the world. And within the last... Um, couple months as we're doing college essays and other things, all of a sudden I see the language from that circle coming out in in words of, of an 18 year old that is just really incredible. So um, as a leader and, and as a member of this school board, I wanna say thank you. And as a, as a community member, I do as well because it's we're seeing it at our kitchen tables. And so thank you. Okay, thanks much. And again, I, I will say that um, now as we let our high school friends transition, this is the opportunity for the audience opportunity to address the school board. And uh, if you are interested in addressing the school board, we just need you to go and fill out a piece of paper um, and Amy can bring it up to me. Uh, just as a reminder, this section of the agenda uh, provides an opportunity for members of the community to address the board. Speakers who wish to provide input to the school board um, after completing your sheet, um, will be handed to us. And when you're invited to the podium, uh, please identify the subject that you're uh, speaking about um, and priority will be given to students and families. It is the practice of the school board to not engage in discussion or debate um, uh, with the speaker, but instead rather allow the speaker time to express their thoughts and we will be here to listen. Um, there's three minutes allotted for every um, speaker, and so uh, if you run past the three minutes, you'll just hear a gentle little bell in the background as just a reminder to uh, conclude your, your thoughts or your comments and wrap up. So um, I have a one speaker coming, um, and that is Sidra. So if you want to come on up and, and have a seat at the table where our presenters have sat, thank you so much for joining us this evening. All right, hi, this is my first time and no easy entry into this. So um, good to be meeting you all. My name is Sidra Khan and I have two children attending the Meadow Ridge Elementary School. And I'm here today as a very concerned parent to build awareness around the widely pervasive issue of Islamophobia, which is right now experiencing an exponential high at this very minute. And it impacts not only my child, but it also impacts hundreds of children across the district um, and their well-being. And I'm here to represent them. And um, sadly, Islamophobia is defined through the prism of physical assault, murder, hate comments hurled at you in public, um, your places of worship destroyed. Eight mosques have either been set on fire or vandalized in the state of Minnesota just this year. And... Um, when Islamophobia truly is being looked at in a strange way or treated differently because you wear a headscarf or a hijab, when you're pulled aside for a random security check at the airport almost every time you travel, when any issue impacting your community is looked at as very complicated or too complex to talk about, or a stigma to many uh, if they're asked to extend support to. And, um, Islamophobia is when your very own school district sends a district-wide announcement on October 12th extending support to a community because of a perceived threat, rightfully so, 
but does not acknowledge when there has been an exponential rise in Islamophobia just this month that has caused loss of very precious human lives. And just to um, mention a few incidents so I can share the gravity of the situation. I'm getting emotional right now. Um, a six-year-old Palestinian child was stabbed 26 times to death because he was a Muslim. A mother stabbed multiple times to death because she was a Muslim. A Muslim-majority charter school uh, receiving a bomb threat here in Minnesota. A Muslim woman attacked with a knife across her face here in the state of Minnesota at a local gas station. And then unprecedented 1,283 reports of Islamophobia hate events in the last month. And all these examples that I've stated are events in the last month. Also know that the majority of the hate crimes go unreported because Muslim families are exhausted. They have lost faith in institutions and they've lost faith in officials that have positions of power and influence. And I wanna change that. Um, based on the traumatic events and statistics that I represent, and also represent many concerned parents, I have three asks. Pretty straightforward from my vantage point. Take immediate action to acknowledge rising Islamophobia through a district-wide announcement so that you educate teachers, you educate staff, you educate students and parents that have a direct and profound impact on the well-being, psychological, and physical safety of Muslim students. Um, there have also been multiple incidents of Islamophobia within the district. So if you don't know a Muslim neighbor, find an acquaintance. I can introduce you to one. They can either share an example or an incident that has impacted them directly or know someone very closely that has been impacted. My second ask is, through the District Office of Diversity and Equity, build awareness and inclusion acumen in staff, in teachers, and in students so they recognize Islamophobia, they prevent it, and they stand up to it and strive to ensure a safe environment for all, regardless of race, religion, gender, ethnicity, and all dimensions of difference. And then enrich the curriculum by including historical facts. Ensure a non-biased way to inform students of geopolitical and global events when they happen, as well as knowledge of different cultures, religions, ethnicities. Thank you for hearing me out, and I look forward to concrete steps in support of the Muslim students. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else this evening? Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. The next, we now move to some administrative reports and recommendations. And we have a number of them that come from the superintendent's office. But I think, do I even go directly to Dr. Anderson, or we'll just turn it over to Amy Geis, our election administrator extraordinaire, as we celebrate the end of the season. Yes, it is indeed the end of election season. Ooh, ooh, maybe I'll use Maybe I'll just talk to them to the table. How's this? Fantastic. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Anderson. Um, this evening I have several items to help in closing out this wonderful election season. Um, the first item is the resolution authorizing issuance of certificates of election and directing the school district clerk, me, to perform other related election duties. Uh, this first task is in relation to the election that was held on November 7th. Voters elected four members of the school board for four year terms, commencing on the first Monday in January of 2024. The four candidates receiving the highest number of votes were Sheila Pryor, Paras Bendy, Dan Ganestra, and Valentina Ayers. The attached resolution authorizes the school district clerk to issue the certificates of election once the time to contest the election is passed. That was yesterday. 
and the candidates have filed all required campaign finance reports. So I'll hold them until those paperwork is in. Uh, the recommended action is before you. Okay, thank you so much. Board colleagues, the recommended action is to approve uh, the resolution to issue the certificates of election and direct the school district clerk to perform other related election duties. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move and ask that we waive the reading of the resolution. I second. Okay, it's been moved by Cheryl, seconded by Millen. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion other than a hearty congratulations to our uh, candidate and candidate elects. Um, this is a roll call vote. Cheryl Posey. Yes. Milan Sahoni. Yes. Linda Cohen. Yes. Sheila Pryor. Yes. Heidi Cater. Yes. Bonita Lucky. Yes. Sarah Johansson. Yes. Fantastic. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the second item I have for you is the resolution canvassing returns of votes for the school district general election. The school district general election for the school board was held on November 7th, 2023 to elect four members to the school board. The four candidates receiving the highest number of votes have been elected to the school board for four year terms effective the first Monday, January, 2024. The four candidates who received the most votes are Sheila Pryor with 5,966 votes, Paras Bendy, 5,695 votes, Dan Ganestra, 5,371 votes, and Valentina Ayers, 3,645 votes. Uh, the resolution canvassing the return of votes is uh, recommended for approval before you. All right. Thank you so much. Again, board and colleagues, the recommended action is to approve the resolution canvassing the returns of the votes for the district's general election. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Does the maker of the motion and the seconder ask that we waive the reading of the resolution? Yes, they do. Yes. All right. It's been moved by Heidi and seconded by Sheila, and it's a roll call vote. Linda Cohen. Yes. Sheila Pryor. Yes. Heidi Cater. Yes. Bonita Lucky? Yes. Cheryl Pozine? Yes. Melissa Honey? Yes. Sarah Johansson? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And the final resolution before you is the resolution canvassing returns of votes for the school district special election, which was held in conjunction with the general election. The school district special election of the school district question, renewal of expiring capital project levy authorization for technology was held on November 7th, 2023 to renew its capital project levy scheduled to expire after taxes payable in 2025. The renewal passed with a 78.95% approval. The yes votes were 6,723, no votes 1,793. The motion before you is to approve the resolution canvassing the returns of the special election. Okay, board colleagues, the recommended action is before you. Is there a motion to that effect? So move, and we have the right to read. Second. It's been moved by Milland and seconded by Sheila. Is there any discussion? I just want to say um, a huge thank you to each and every voter that um, came to understand the importance of the tech levy that named to presentations and for everyone that came out to cast a ballot. This is such a huge um, part of, of all that we do. And, and as you learned in the thing, it touches every portion of what our students do from safety and security to learning um, to access. And so thank you again to our voters for your extreme confidence in us and in the work that we do. Thank you as well again, as I see Wade Phillips, the star of the movie that was about the tech levy, as well as Dee Dee and all of our staff um, to uh, engage and Amy and communications um, to educate a community about something that's important, takes a heavy lift and a big load and so um, for uh, all of your time and all of your moments and all of your conversations thank you so very much it truly was a collective effort and we appreciate you to that end it's a roll call vote Sheila Pryor yes Heidi Cater yes Bonita Lucky yes Cheryl Posey yes Milan Sahoni yes Linda Cohen yes Sarah Johansson yes Congratulations, election season has been 
completed. Thank you, Amy, again for all of your work too. And as the as the manager of all of that, wow, very very impressive. Okay, and uh, coming down our agenda, the next item um, is under finance and operations, and we have some monthly financial reports. Dee Dee. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Anderson. Tonight I have for you the 2023 school year financial report analysis, which we do on a monthly basis. And this is for month ending September 30th, 2023. When we first look at the statement of revenues, just point out that the numbers are only representative of the first three months of the school year, beginning in uh, July. State aid revenues are slightly up, but close in line with our prior years. Um, deviations in revenue from prior years include federal aids and miscellaneous local revenue, which can vary from year to year, and are also impacted by the 23 accrued expenses for or skewed, accrued revenue. Excuse me. Um, additionally, deviations in food service are also directly related to fiscal year 23 accruals and reversals. And this has come on the um, advice of our um, auditing firm. And then community education revenue is up slightly from the prior year. On to the statement of expenditures. Um, overall expenditures are relatively similar to prior years. Um, as, all, <clears throat> as is usually the case, variations compared to prior years are primarily driven by the timing of payments, timing of projects, timing of purchases of supplies, materials, and capital expenditures, along with the timing of payments for uh, purchase services. The reports were provided to the school board as well as the investment summary. Uh, typically we review these at the monthly financial um, uh, board committee. We did not hold that this month, but these reports were provided to all board members. So thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about the Wyzetta Education Fund. Um, their annual fundraiser this year is taking a different form. They're having um, a gala, and the date of that is February 3rd at uh, 6.30 p.m. That's a Saturday. It will be held at the uh, Wyzetta Country Club, and tickets are on sale right now. If you go to their website, you can purchase tickets for that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Any other board reports? Okay. Hearing none, that concludes our agenda, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Cheryl and seconded by Linda. Uh, is uh, all in favor of adjourning this evening, please say aye. 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 No. All right. It is 8.24 p.m., and the Wyzetta Public Schools School Board meeting for Monday, November 13th is adjourned.